Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 side scroller series. In today's video we are going to be setting up a simple coin system whereby the player can pick up some coins in the game and then it will be added to a counter. And then later on in the series we might be able to, we might be saving this and letting the player buy things with these little coins. But for now we're going to be setting up the system. So if we take a quick look at my heads up display you can see that we've got the coin counter at the top hand corner and then we're just pretty much going to pick up some coins in the game and that is what we're setting up today. So first things first before we do go any further I want to mention that we've got a coin mesh and a coin texture in the latest folder for side scroller. These will pretty much allow the player and allow the engine to see the coin. This is what's going to make the coin. So anyway without further ado let's go ahead and dive into it. So just go ahead and open up the engine and first things first we're going to go ahead and import the coin and the coin texture into the engine. So all you're doing is just grabbing coin underscore diffuse and coin underscore mesh and then just dragging it into the content browser just like that. Give it a second to import, press import and then from there we've just got to create the material and it's pretty simple. So we've got the coin mesh here. Just give that a couple of seconds, that's our coin mesh, and then we've got the texture to the left of that. So with coin underscore diffuse, right click that, and let's go ahead and create a material so that we can actually use it. I'm just going to leave the name as default for now, and then I'm going to go ahead and open that up. So, by default our normal texture sample should be hooked up to the base colour, and in a moment this should all come to life and you should be able to see the material for the coin. One thing that I also want to do is I actually want to make this coin glow a little bit so that it can be seen sort of far away, it just makes it stand out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to type in multiply, and then I'm going to hook up multiply to emissive colour texture sample I'm going to put it into the A and then from there I'm just going to go ahead and create a constant and hook that up into the B. What this is doing is pretty much multiplying the strength of the texture sample at the moment uh, for the emissive anyway um, and then we can just use it to control the brightness of the coin. So if I set this to something like 15 it's going to make it quite bright. If I set it to 50 it's going to keep going up and up and up. Now you're just going to have to give it a little while for these previews to kick in but for me I think that looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and press apply and then I'm going to make sure I also save the changes for this as well. So give that a couple of seconds and then we'll move on to applying the material to the coin mesh itself. Let's just give that a moment. There you are. So now let's go ahead and open up the coin mesh and on the right hand corner in the right hand side in the details panel just go ahead and set the coin uh, material to coin underscore diffuse underscore mat and now you can see we've got a little coin here with this little dog on it which is brilliant um, now we've done that what we've got to do is we've actually got to create a variable inside of the player so that we actually know and can store how many of these little coins the player has so open up the side scroller character give it a second to load up, everything is running super slow for me today and then because we're storing this information it needs to be a variable, variable. so go ahead and create one of these variable and then we're just going to name this coins and then under variable type in the top right hand corner once again we just need to make sure we change this to a number value so instead of being a boolean as it is at the moment we're just going to use an integer as it's just whole numbers. Once we've done that, compile it and then just make sure your default value is set to zero because by default we don't want the player to have any of these coins. So let's leave that and the next thing that we need to do now then is pretty much just create a blueprint and you know set up some script for making it disappear when you collect it and also telling it to add one to that value. So create a blueprint class, actor, and then we're just going to call this coin pickup for now. Once we've done that, go ahead and open it up and then in the top left hand corner in the viewport we need to go ahead and add a component and the component we're after is a static mesh and then under static mesh we need to make sure the model is set to coin and this will, will make it nice and easy to see this coin so we've got our doki coin there so in terms of scale what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this out of the way for a second and then I'm going to put my, co my coin pick up into the scene I can see at the moment it is way too big, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the scale down to 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Now if you're using your own coin mesh or anything like that, simply just go ahead and select uh, and you know just get the right size for you. That's still a little bit too big, so I'm going to use 0 0.2, 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. 
and that looks a little bit better. So what I'm also going to do is quickly add a rotating movement just to make it spin and make it look a little bit cooler. So if I go ahead and put this in here, press play, we should see it spinning around which is quite nice and you definitely know now that it's a pickup, something that you should collect. It just looks like a coin, it's good. So next thing that we need to do then is in the event graph we need to go ahead and add a box collision so that we can check when the player is colliding with this little box and then remove it and then change the number of coins the player has so add a box collision in your viewport and then just scale this up so it covers the whole size of the coin here and centralize it and that's perfect so now what we need to do we need to go into the event graph and start setting up some of the back end some of the script and the logic for this so what I'm going to do with box collision selected, I'm going to click and drag and then we'll get this little reference to it. From here, create a begin overlap event. So basically when the player now overlaps with its object, we can fire off a little bit of code. The other actor is going to be the player character. So once again, we're just casting to side scroll the character. And then from here, we can go ahead and run any script and make any changes. So what we need to do is as the side scroller character, we need to increase the coin value by one. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag out as side scroller character and type in set coin or set coins and then hook this up. And then from here coins, what we're going to do is integer plus integer. And what this is going to do is get a reference to coins. So what we need to do basically is pretty much just get the value it's currently at and then add one onto it just like this. Once we've done that, that's pretty much everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag this out and print a string. So I'm going to drag this out, print string, and then I'm just going to hook up in string to this and it will convert it and it will just pretty much print on the screen how many of these coins the player has in their inventory. After this, once again, we just need to destroy the actor so that it disappears from the player's viewport. So if we go ahead and compile, close it, press play. If we go and collect this, it says one in the top left hand corner and that is great. And if we put a couple of these into the scene so we can actually see the system working going up each time. So if we collect the first one, that's one and then two and then three and that is perfect. Cool. So. What we need to do now is, I still think it's a little bit too big for the coin, so I'm going to quickly adjust that. And then after that, we also need to change some things on the heads up display so that we can actually get this value shown on the screen. In terms of size, I'm going to quickly scale this down to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1. And that's looking a little bit better. That's more like it. That's perfect. So now we've got to open up the heads up display. If you remember, we've got this little HUD widget. This contains all of the graphical information for the heads up display. So open it up, give it a moment to load. And then inside of here, what we've we got to do a couple of things. So first things first, I'm going to drag a image in there and I'm also going to add a text box in there. So if we look at the Photoshop document, you can see we've got a little bit of text and then we've also got the little icon as well for this coin. I haven't actually got this coin in the folder yet, so I'm going to quickly export this out. If you guys are watching this back, you will have this all in the folder. We'll give it a name in a second. Give that a couple of seconds to load up. Once again, it's being really, really slow. So it's not good. Okay. So select this, export all, and I am simply going to name this, oh, wrong layer. So let's grab this coin, export as give it a couple of seconds and then we're going to just export this simply as coin underscore picture for now making sure that we export this as a, as a PNG once we've done this we're diving back into the engine and we pretty much need to get that image on top of this image here so what I've got to do is I've got to go into my file explorer I've got to get under uh, coin underscore picture and then I'm going to drag it in to my content browser just like that. And then over on the right hand side in the details panel for appearance, for brush, for the image, I'm just going to use coin underscore picture and we've got that in our scene now and that is perfect. It's going to scale this. There we are. Cool. So 
Next thing that I need to do is I need to get this text here to actually display the value for the coins. It's quite simple. <clears throat> So, if you remember in some of the previous videos, what we did to make this text dynamic is we actually just created a text binding for this. What that's going to do is it's going to bind the text to a variable, and every time this variable changes, it's going to update the text. So, the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to the details panel for the text. By default, I'm just going to set this to 00, zero for now, just so we know sort of roughly what it's going to look like, and so we can place it next to the coin. And then for the binding, just go ahead and create a binding. And from here, what we've got to do is cast to side scroller character. And then over here, as side scroller character, simply just type in get coins and hook it up to the return value just here. There you are. Cool. And in two text, and in this little two text here, the conversion thing, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change min uh, minimum integral digits to two. That way it always has two numbers. So it's like zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, instead of just one. Just to tidy things up a bit, you'll see what I mean in a moment. And then under the object wildcard, go ahead and type in get player character. And then compile this. And then if we go ahead and press play, you can see we've got zero coins at the top. If I run over it, it changes it to one. Go to the second one, it says two, three, and so on. And it's working really, really nice. So there's a couple of things that we need to do in our heads up display. We just need to quickly anchor the points so they stay centralized all of the time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this over and centralize it a little bit. And then I am going to anchor it to the top middle. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the coin picture as well. And for the text as well, I'm also going to change the color. So I'm going to make this like a slight yellow just to make it pop out and match things there a little bit as well. And then I'm also just going to quickly put a little image underneath that just to give it that sort of black look that we had before. So I am going to grab this and I'm going to get color and opacity and I'm just going to make this to black. And I'm going to change it's just placing it somewhere a little bit odd. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly restart the engine and we'll get back into this. So I'm just going to save it. You probably won't have this issue, but I'll be back with you in a moment. To one. So I need to put the Z order on these to one and this to zero so that the box is in the back. So da -da 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 -da. set this to one. There you are. And then pretty much just going to cover up these little icons with this box just to tidy things up and make it look nice and clean. So let's have a look, how is that looking? So let's move this down a bit. And that is perfect. So if we go ahead and compile this, hopefully that should be everything we need to do. Make sure you anchor the box as well, as it's gotta be in the same location. Compile it, press play, and there you are. We've got a little coin counter, and each time I collect one of these, it goes up and up and up, and that is perfect. So hopefully you guys can see this game is really starting to come together. We've got pickups, we've got abilities. Um, you know, some of these abilities are really, really great. So for example, I can't jump up with this. I need to use my gravity to do that, so now I can jump super high. It's really cool. There is so much lined up. So there's one last thing that I do want to do before I end the video, and that is I actually want to change my health pickup. So instead of taking away some health, it's just going to add some health on top. So what I'm going to do is quickly change float to float plus float instead of minus, and then I'm just going to chuck this in here, and then I'm going to set this to 25. All of this is done inside of my health drop blueprint. It's pretty straightforward. So now. <clears throat> When we actually pick up the health, it's not going to damage me. So let me show you. So if we jump in the fire for a second and then pick up one of the little health items, it gives me extra health, which is perfect. Anyway, guys, that is pretty much everything for this video. Once again, thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out.